Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for your word and song. <clears throat> thank you for these guys that play these songs and uh, get us to think about you before we even hear the message. So, uh, Lord, our focus is on you, and we ask that you'd help us to pay attention. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> My wife and I, we, uh, I think we have direct TV, but we don't, we don't have anything else. And our kids came along and gave us Disney Plus. I watched Swiss Family Robinson from 1960 the other day. Uh, yeah, well, it just goes to show you how old I am. Uh, and our kids gave us uh, Amazon and Netflix. And you know, there's a lot of garbage on that, but there's some good things. And, and the other night, we saw a good thing. We saw a, a movie called uh, Full Count. Thank you, she helped me remember. Full Count, about a young kid who's a pitcher and, and really talented. And his dad owns a farm, and his dad can't keep up with everything and depends on him, and, and, and it's hard on him. And he ends up going to college, but grudgingly, and he, his whole life he just wanted to be a, a baseball player. If he could, if he can't, fine, but at least he wants to try. And then tragedy takes place. And I'm not going to tell you the movie, but what he learns in it all is to be content. You know how many times you've been to church and heard the scriptures in Philippians where Paul said, I am content in all things. It goes in one ear, right out the other. Because if it were true that we paid attention to what we heard, we'd all be content. You know, when I, I got, Harry was talking about cancer, and I got this cancer in my neck. My neck was bothering me for quite some time, and my wife kept telling me, you really just need to go to the doctor. Well, you know how much we listen to our wives, and uh, I put it off for a good year or whatever, and uh, finally I, I had to go, and it's cancer. And so they take it out, and everybody but me wants to know how bad it is. Did you hear what I said? <laughs> Everybody but me. Did you call the doctor? Did you get the pathology report? Did you? Why would I want to know bad news before it comes? If bad news is coming, it's coming. So I'm just going to have fun until that bad news comes. I am content with whatever. If, if we don't learn to pay attention, we're going to pay the price. We hear a lot of things, but are we, are we really taking them to heart? And, and I want to encourage you to pay attention more than you've ever paid attention in your life. Learn to be content. In everything. You say, well, I've heard that. Yeah, but you're not paying attention. You learn to be content. You don't have as much stress on your life. Everybody around you has stress. You don't have stress. I learned a long time ago never to worry about money. My wife worries about it for me, so I don't have to worry about it. She literally does. She worries about it. I don't worry about it. Say, so, well, you could end up underneath a... Bridge, thank you. Hey, no, thanks for the help. Bridge, that's a good word. Yeah, but but I'm not there yet. So why worry about it? You know, the Bible says to learn to be content with your health, whether it's good or bad. People that don't like you. Does anybody here have anybody that doesn't like them? Raise your hand. We all do. We got somebody that doesn't like us. If you didn't raise your hand, I don't like you. Okay, so now you have somebody that doesn't like you. Now watch. Why worry about people that don't care about you? Give them, give them enough time, they'll not care about somebody else, right? Pretty soon their attention is going to be off you and off some, on somebody else. So give it up. Don't, don't, don't worry about these things. 
How many here remember the story in Genesis 3 and 4 about Cain and Abel? Uh, simple story, okay? That is the very story that my wife and I heard 47 years ago when I talked her into going to that church for, with me for the first time. I, I hadn't been in church either, but the guy that picked me up and witnessed to me that week, you know, I thought, man, this is this salvation stuff is great stuff. She needs to know this stuff. And if you'd have known her before she was saved, woo! <clears throat> She was a pretty good girl. We get to church. I, I don't know if you remember. I still remember the subject 47 years ago that he talked about. He talked about the Cain and Abel story. And by the way, I paid attention. Here's Cain. Genesis chapter 3. He's not born yet. Adam and Eve sin. God curses the ground. Curses her. She now has to have pain when she has a baby. She now has to submit to the lesser creation, which is man, because she was the greater creation. And, uh, and so you have all these curses, but in verse 21, God says, okay, even though you brought all this upon yourself because you didn't pay attention to me in the garden, I still want to provide salvation for you. So he brings a, probably a lamb, an animal, that just says animal skin, and he slays this innocent animal. Adam and Eve look at God and say, well, how come you had to sacrifice? That animal didn't do anything wrong. Well, that's a picture of me becoming flesh and blood 4,000 years from now, having done nothing wrong, and yet without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Something's got to pay the price. Now, I'm not going to make you pay it. You've already got, you're already going to reap what you've sown on this earth, but I don't want you to face eternity that way. So I'm going to take care of it, and so I'm going to take this lamb, I'm going to slit its throat, shed this innocent blood, and I'm going to offer you the skins to wear. And they gladly received it along with the salvation God provided. Now watch. Less than who knows how much time Cain and Abel were Adam and Eve's first two children. By the way, Tradition tells us they had 54 kids. Well, I mean, you lived eight, 900 years old, you're going to have a few kids. And of course, this is before, you know, a whole lot of the curse came down. So Cain and Abel were the first, Cain being the first, then Abel. And mom and dad said to Cain and Abel, listen, we got in trouble in chapter 3. Are you paying attention? <laughs> Don't bring God anything but what he asks which is a sacrificed lamb. Cain went out into the field. He worked hard, sweated, sounds like religion, and did all these things for God and brought all these crops back and said, God, here you go. You happy with me? He said, you're not paying attention. First kid ever born didn't pay attention. And God said, I asked for a lamb. Your brother Abel, he, he brought me a lamb. You didn't bring me a lamb. He says, well, I don't like my brother then. And he killed Abel. And he got cursed. All because he didn't pay attention. Don't, don't think for a moment that Adam and Eve didn't tell Cain and Abel everything. Because Abel got it. How come Cain didn't get it? You say, well, when do we ever listen to our parents? Jenna? <laughs> it's time to listen to your parents. Okay? Must be something there. I, I, if you're like me growing up, you didn't pay attention a whole lot, okay? But, but I do want you to know, I did pay attention one time. And I'm here today because I did. My wife knows this story. I didn't grow up with guns. I didn't, do, I didn't grow up in Texas. I grew up in Chicago. Now, you'd think I'd grow up with guns, because <laughs> they're loaded with guns in Chicago. But in my household, we never had any guns. I mean, not even a BB gun. And I remember my mom always telling me, if you ever get a gun, never, 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 never point it at people. Well, what if I go in the Army? Well, that's different. You're in war. Outside of that, never point a gun at people. Thank God I listened. Say, why? Because when I went into the military, I had lots of guns. 
And I remember one day dropping this one guy off at a bar, and he didn't want to walk into the bar with his 32, so he handed me the revolver and said, would you hold this? And I had the music on. I said, yeah. I said, is it loaded? The music was so loud, he didn't hear me. He just said, meaning he didn't hear me. I thought he said the gun wasn't loaded. Now, you'd have thought, being in the military, I was with the 101st Airborne Division, I, I was the armor. I took care of all the special weapons, everything else. You'd have thought I would just looked at the cylinder to see if there were rounds in that thing. But I didn't because I was caught up in the... <laughs> and I was sitting in my Corvette. I was the only private at Fort Campbell, Kentucky that had a Corvette Stingray, 69. All the officers had them and I had one because when I went in the military, I just saved my money. Isn't that what you're supposed to do? That's not what soldiers do, but that's what I did. I saved it for a whole year. I made $277 a month, so I had over $3,000 saved in one year. I mean, they feed you, they house you, they take care of your medical. What do you have to spend anything on? And I didn't. Bought me a Corvette. <laughs> so I'm looking at that 32 pistol. And uh, Barley, I think his name was Barley, he walked into the bar, said he was going to come right back, he just didn't want to walk in with his pistol. I'm waiting for him. So I pulled back the hammer. I just thought it was empty. And I stuck it to my head. It's the absolute truth. And I was going to pull the trigger. Literally, I was going to pull the trigger. And I heard my mom say, never, never, never point the gun at people. That eh, all right. So I just clicked it and blew a hole right through my my stereo system. Oh, oh my goodness! And 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 the guy came back in. And I'm still like this. He came back in. He says, "What's all this smoke?" I said, "Look, I got a hole in my car." He said, what'd you shoot your car for? I said, I asked you if this thing was loaded or not. He said, well, I didn't know what you were saying. I said, well, I almost shot myself. <laughs> well, why didn't you? Because <laughs> my mama said, never, never, never point guns at people. Now, I didn't always listen to my folks, but I listened that day, and I'm here today for one reason, one reason only, because I finally paid attention to something. Do you know how many people go to church and hear and hear and hear and still don't get it? You need to hear and get it. You either pay the price or you pay attention. Throughout the scriptures, we will find person after person failing in life for one reason and one reason alone. They failed to pay attention. Proverbs 1, 8, and 9. My son, hear the instruction of thy father. Pay attention. Solomon said, and forsake not the law of thy mother. Pay attention. Don't just hear. Listen and pay attention. Turn to Luke 16. I'll do this as quick as I can. Luke 16. By the way, while you're turning to Luke 16, I, I want you to know I don't have a bitter bone in my body about anything or anybody. Nothing. Say, so why not? Because I paid attention to Scripture, Hebrews 12, I think it is, verse 15, where it says, if, if you get bitter, you'll have a root that not only affects you, because you'll have all that stuff coming out, it's going to affect everybody around you. And and I'm, I'm just not bitter. I, I, you don't like me, that's okay. Probably something true. You don't want to be around me? Yeah, it's okay. You want to say something about me? Probably true. Say it anyway. You want to be bitter, that's up to you. I don't want to be bitter. By the way, you know that the grizzly bear is the largest bear in North America? I mean, a brown bear can kill you. You realize it will not allow anything to eat with it while it's grazing. Nothing except one little animal. And he hates that animal, but he ain't going to mess with it. It's called a skunk. <laughs> that grizzly bear, 
He knows if he takes vengeance on that skunk, he's going to pay the price for it. And so he allows that brazen little animal to mosey along with it. No other animal but that skunk. Why? Because he's a smart grizzly. He's not going to get even. Don't get even with people. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. And, and by the way, you don't go to God and say, God, I won't put it in my hands, but listen, I got, I got a list of things I need you to do to this person, that person. No, folks. <laughs> don't go there. Don't, don't be bitter. Why? Because God says it's going to ruin your life. Usually the people you're bitter at don't even know it. They go to bed sleeping well. Your bed becomes a torture rack because that's all you can think of. So how, how do you get to that place? I pay attention. I pay attention to Scripture. I pay attention to my mom. I'm still standing here. I pay attention to Scripture. I don't have problems with bitterness or hateful. Or The more we pay attention, the better off we'll be. So here, here's what I want to do. Oh, I got nine minutes or less. I don't even know if I can get this in. Should I do this or wait till next week to... Keep preaching, we ain't no No, I know, but I, I, I need to be kind to, to you folks. And, and <laughs> let, let me... Go for it. Go for it. I, I, I'm not going to read it. Let me just give you the story. Is that fair? In Luke chapter 16, about the rich man and Lazarus, and how the Bible says the rich man fared sumptuously every day. He was a party animal. <laughs> and, and Lazarus, he was poor and always begging at his gate and... Uh, you know, unfortunately, the rich man didn't see his need for God because he was just concerned about the temporal realm, and the poor man needed God. By the way, it's good to be poor. No, 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 no. It, it really is. Let me read to you James 2.17. That, that's one verse that's worth reading. James 2.5, I mean. Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith? See, had the rich man paid attention to that scripture, he would have actually helped the poor man. But he didn't pay attention to this and realize that being poor and needy makes you want God a little more than the rich person does. Common sense. But the Bible says the rich man died and he was buried and went to hell. And Lazarus died, and he was in heaven. And isn't it amazing? The rich man didn't look at Lazarus in heaven and say, Now, how did you get there? You were nothing but this poor guy begging at my gate all the time. You know, religion was a crutch to you. How'd you get there? He never said that. He knew exactly who Lazarus was. He said, This is the guy that may have been poor, but he was rich in faith, and I didn't pay attention. We need to pay attention to the most important things. We hurt ourselves more by not paying attention than by people that hurt us. You add up your entire life, you're going to find out if you've been hurt, it's pretty much you didn't pay attention to something and you hurt yourself more than anyone else will ever hurt you. I'll finish with this, and I know I didn't even get into it, but I'll finish with this because we have to have the Lord's Supper and we need to get the, the wedding party on its way. When I was with the 101st Airborne Division back in 1972, they taught us in jump school at Fort Benning how to properly exit a plane, and they trained us on C-119, C-121, C-123, C-130s, never a C-141. So that when you get in these prop planes, you're always taught to put your hands on the outside of the airplane and give yourself a good jump so you can get into the prop blast so you don't hit the plane and get a malfunction. I've seen two guys have malfunctions over the three years I was with the 100 percent and it's not a pretty thing. You know, the guy who, who fixes the shoes for you to jump, they're called riggers. You want to be good to riggers. <laughs> the, the, 
these riggers have to put their name and everything else in every chute they pack. So if one goes bad, it goes back to the rigger. Now I saw a couple guys' chutes fail. But during jump school, they taught us on these, these prop planes, get out there into the prop last, and, and I just, I listened. They had one day before we jumped, and they said, listen, we're jumping out of C-141s instead of C-130, C-123s. So whatever you do, don't put your hands on the outside of the plane and jump out into that prop blast because it's a different kind of plane. You just have to walk out. I didn't hear a word he said. When I got up there, my first jump, you have to have five to become a paratrooper. First jump. You know, I was sick to my stomach because I get motion sickness, couldn't wait to get out. You know, hook up your static line, jump master, wait for the green light, and uh, go, you know. So we're just shuffling along. I, you know, the air's hitting me, so I'm feeling better and better and better. And I'm not thinking of anything but what I've been trained at. I throw in my static line, I grab the outside, of the, everyone else just kind of skips out. Somebody's paying attention. I wouldn't pay attention. I put my hands on the outside that C-141, and I just gave myself a jump. Oh, buddy. It threw me into a different kind of prop blast, and it slammed me against the plane, and I had multiple malfunction bubbles in my shoe. And while I'm coming down, I, I mean, I'm coming down quick, and we're, we're only jumping from 2,000 feet, and the black cats on the ground with their megaphones, pull your reserve, boy, just yelling at me through the megaphones. And I knew they were talking to me because the guy that jumped in front of me, I passed him. <laughs> I was fortunate that day because I grabbed my reserve. This is the first jump I ever made. Grabbed my reserve and I froze. I couldn't pull up. So it was over for me, except I looked up into all my bubbles in my chute and I said, Whoa! sudden the whole thing comes out I, I still hit the ground pretty good but I didn't crash and burn you say what, what, what happened oh the words the black hat used on me oh, oh, oh. you blankety blank idiot you should have died how come you didn't pull your reserve don't you didn't you learn anything and I'm just kissing the ground just thank you God I made it but I got in trouble, watch, because I didn't pay attention to everything. I paid attention to some things, I paid attention to some of my training, but I didn't pay attention to everything. Well, it's their fault for just telling you the day before. Is it really? No. Just because you come to church once a week and you hear the Word of God once a week, God's still going to hold us accountable for what we heard and whether we paid attention or not. The whole idea, folks, is when God speaks, pay attention, because it's always for your good. Always. And I've learned this over the years. And so I know we skipped a ton of this, but uh, the whole idea this morning is pay attention or pay the price. And uh, we're all proof of that. So when you go to church, really, really pay attention. And, and get what you're supposed to get. Don't let it go in one ear and out the other. Let's pray. Father, thank you for our time this morning. And I do appreciate everything that you have to say. And Lord, if all of us would just always pay attention to what is being said and not letting it go in one ear and out the other, we would bring less problems on our life. And so help us to be mindful of this as we live day by day. In Christ's name. Amen. All right, let's go ahead and have the Lord's Supper here this morning. Um, <clears throat> oh, mine. Thank you. Now watch. This is a perfect example of not paying attention. Right here. Okay? I never went to church. I, uh, my, my grandfather was Catholic. You know, he married my grandmother who was a prostitute. 
He, by the way, he, he arrested her in Chicago and fell in love with her and murdered her. Um, <clears throat> she never went to church, mind you. Uh, I never went to church. He did every now and then, and I used to follow him, and I got caught one time, and he took me into the Catholic Church, and, and they had communion. And I remember the priest saying that, you know, this here turns into the body of Christ, and this here turns into his blood. Well, that's cannibalism. Are you paying attention? When Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14, 11, to take the Lord's Supper, he said, now listen, pay attention, do this in remembrance of what Jesus did for you and I. In remembrance, not receiving him like he becomes flesh and blood and you're cannibalism, you're eating him and drinking his blood. No, no, we're, you're not listening, you're not paying attention. This here is just a symbol. Joe, mom called me last night, well Joe did, and mom was on the phone, great lady, and she said, uh, Pastor Brad, she said, do you have to be baptized to be saved? And I said, only the gospel saves. Are you listening? Paul said, and we'll, we'll, take, we'll take this in a second. Paul said in Romans 1.16, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it, the gospel, is the power of God unto salvation to whoever believeth. Only the gospel saves. Coming to church doesn't save. Pray doesn't save. Turn over a new leaf in life doesn't save. Becoming a Baptist doesn't save. Becoming a Catholic doesn't save. Becoming a Mormon, a Muslim. Doesn't. No, no, no. Only the gospel saves. Pay attention. And Paul said this in 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 17. He said, Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Meaning baptism ain't a part of the gospel. And it's not. It's just a picture of what Christ did. Baptism, buried in the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of his resurrection. It allows you who get saved to finally give a witness of your salvation without saying a word. That's the beauty of baptism. Make no mistake, this here does not become the actual flesh of Christ or the actual blood of Christ. Are you listening? This here is but a symbol of his blood and a symbol of his flesh. That's all it is. And the Bible says, do this in remembrance of me. So if we do it once a month or every week, fine. However, whatever church wants to do it that way is fine. But this is just a symbol. It's like a camera. If you had a camera back there, they'd take it and give us a picture of what he did when he was dying. But they didn't have cameras. This is the best way to illustrate it. And so we who name the name of Christ, we are able to do this scripturally. So if you don't mind, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul said uh, the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. And by the way, the bread was unleavened, meaning there was no <laughs> corruption in it, no bacteria like a donut. <laughs> and uh, that's because Jesus was sinless. That's the reason for the symbol. And said, take this and eat it. This is the flesh that was broken for you. And so, Lord Jesus, thank you. This is just a symbol of your body that went to the cross to die for me. The Bible says he took the cup. It didn't say he took the wine. I don't know if you noticed that. He took the cup. And I'll guarantee you the cup had grape juice in it. Now, if this has wine in it, I'm, I'm not against it, but wine has bacteria in it, yes or no? It's what makes it wine. There was no corruption in the blood of Christ. Are you listening? This is a picture of the sinless blood of Jesus Christ. No corruption whatsoever. And we are not only to take the unleavened bread, we are to take the grape juice, which represents the blood that was shed for our sins, and say thank you for the body and the blood that was provided for my salvation. Do you realize if, if, if you understood all that as a believer, you took that, you know how pleased God is with what you did? 
And this is all about pleasing God. It's all about being thankful for our salvation. Well, we need to get this wedding party out of here, I know. Uh, and wait. thank you for being so patient. And uh, <laughs> Russ and, and Jill and the fam great family, we love I'm them. Still <laughs> <laughs> you know, you need to come up here to this altar here and confess your sin. Uh, there you go, there you go. There you go. Somebody help this lady. All right, let's, let's go ahead and pray. Father, thank you for our time here. Lord, all I wanted to do was help the folks to learn to pay attention. It's so important to pay attention to everything that you have to say, not just hear it, but actually pay attention to it because it's going to save us a lot of heartache down the road. And I thank you for the word, and I thank you for my salvation. Thank you for the, the blood that was shed and the body that was sacrificed for me. In Christ's name, amen. amen.